five years ago, I was an unhappy, burnt out tech consultant, binge watching TED Talks after work in the hopes of figuring out how to find a career I actually liked. Of the hundred I watched, seriously, that's impressive, two stuck out the most. The first was titled, Three Questions to Unlock Your Authentic Career by a career coach named Ashley Stahl. As I saw her title come up on the screen, it piqued my curiosity and I quickly Googled, what's a career coach? And upon reading thought, that's a job? That sounds like a dream to me. The problem was it seemed a little, maybe more than a little outlandish at the time because I was 24. <laughs> but I thought, what are the odds that if I gave it a shot now, that within the next five years, I could achieve at least moderate success in a career like this? Fears continued to rain down upon me, so naturally the second TED Talk that stuck out to me the most was titled, Why You Should Define Your Fears Instead of Your Goals by Tim Ferriss. And in this question, or in this talk, he posed this question. As you consider your particular goal, ask yourself, has anyone in the history of the world less smart or less motivated than me ever figured this out? And to that I thought, game on, baby! So I, uh, this is a snapshot from my Freedom Day party that my roommates threw for me in Dallas, the day that I quit my consulting job to start my own career coaching practice, in which I help faith-driven professionals discern what they feel called to do and practically land a job that's aligned with it, with efficiency and speed, often not having to go back to school or take a pay cut, blah, 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 it's pretty sweet. So seeing that it's been actually about five years since this whole experiment to see if I could create a dream career began. I'm here to report very honestly how it's gone and to share the three main lessons I've observed from helping hundreds of professionals make meaningful career pivots of their own. Pivots like software engineering to garden design, tech to talent acquisition, accounting to operations, teaching high school dance to going into marketing, strategy consulting to financial advising, and there's so many more stories I could tell. Here's the first lesson, so you could start creating your own dream career, even if you're currently skeptical that's possible. It's not hard to know what you want to do, it's hard to overcome your fears and assumptions to get it. Of course it's hard to know exactly what you want right out of the gate, I would never expect that, but my premise is this. People are actually pretty good at identifying at least their basic desires. Desires like the kinds of tasks that you would love to spend the majority of your day doing, or the kinds of subject matters that capture your fascination that you would want to talk about, think about, or research all day long, because that's a job. <laughs> or at least the kind of company culture or team dynamic you want to be a part of. The problem is you just might not be sure that A, there's a job that really matches that whole wish list. You don't want to be unrealistic or B, if there was, it would be possible to land at least at this stage of your career. But before you dismiss those aspirations, what if you just gave it a second and gave yourself the chance to be pleasantly surprised by the following market research activity? Ask yourself, who do I know that could give me ideas for jobs that match my criteria? Not sure, just hack. Make a beeline for the most well-networked professionals you know, like realtors and hairstylists and Uber drivers, for sure Uber drivers, because I am so willing to bet they've heard of some pretty niche, weird ways people make a living, some of which might actually sound like a dream to you. And the key here is to get off of Google and into conversations with people because you likely don't even know what keywords to type into Google or LinkedIn or Indeed to pull up that super ideal result that you might just be able to go for. Once you collect some interesting ideas, ask professionals in those jobs, what would I have to be good at, like doing, and don't forget this one, have a tolerance for in order to find this a satisfying fit in the long run. And if you're thinking, why even try? Because for sure, Kelsey, my aspirations are super crazy and that's surely not a job and people aren't gonna pay me to do that, at least not more than two pennies. Let me introduce you to my identical twin sister who is a mindset coach for ballet dancers and she speaks all around the world and gets paid great money and she owns a house in Austin as a single woman, we get it, you know? So I'm trying to say that I wanna challenge you to nurture your 
imagination and optimism more than just your pessimism that might be thinly veiled as pragmatism. Now for the second lesson. The only thing that will qualify you to do that work you want to do is the work you want to do. So just get after it. And why I say this is I've noticed that myself and others struggle with the assumption that we just need more time or more experience or maybe even to go back to school before you could go into what you really want to do. But is that really required? Have you asked five to 10 professionals in your ideal field what the minimum viable path is into that profession? And no, scrolling through lengthy job requirements on LinkedIn does not count because that will only show you the maximum viable path, not the realistic minimum that a boss might actually accept. So ask some true insiders what it really takes, at least at a minimum. And you might be encouraged and surprised by what they say. Of course, I understand the proclivity to not feel good enough or to overcomplicate the steps to becoming qualified for what you really want to do because you heard, I was 24 when I first opened myself to starting a business, opened myself up to the idea of it at least. And of course I thought, who's going to listen to me in their right mind? Like, and surely I need more years in corporate before I could do something like that. But as I really sat with it, I thought maybe the best thing that's going to help me become a good career coach and really serve people is to practice leading career coaching conversations. It's pretty logical actually, right? <laughs> and so why spend my time in less relevant ways and in less relevant professions, assuming a less direct path that I actually don't need to take? Especially since if I waited years down the line until I felt ready, which never happens by the way, I would just have to start then with the same career coaching certification program that I could just start now. So why not just go for it? Because the confidence we so badly want just comes from competence. And competence really just comes from experience. And so I hope you'll just get the painful part over and start getting your hands dirty instead of like just staying in like knowledge collection land. <laughs> and so here are some ways that you could do that. The first is to ask people in your desired field, like a b them, what are you working toward right now? And how can I help? I'm so willing to bet they have not been asked this stunningly sincere and cute question. And you would be surprised by what you get invited to do as a result. And you might end up like many of the people I've supported, like Alex, who, when we first met last March, he was making $27,000 a year as a videographer for a nonprofit, and he was over it. He doesn't mind me sharing that. <laughs> and he used networking techniques like this one that you can too in order to make a direct entrance into his ideal job as a client success manager in tech making 80 k and he was elated with that, but he actually just leveraged the whole process again, again, just through networking and not just cold applying to land an even better job for 121K a year and talk about one big glow up year of his life. May he be an inspiration to us all. The second thing you could do is to start freelancing. And we know this, but the easiest way to do this is to tell your network what you're up to and to say, I'm accepting three beta clients for half my full starting rate and just make up a starting rate. It really doesn't matter as much as you think. And put it in parentheses, sales psychology. <laughs> and do this in exchange for testimonials. And this is what you could do to gain that credibility that you need and that experience um, that often even discounts us from entry level jobs that is needed to go get that full time job. Fun fact my first client was my childhood friend Susanna, who paid me $1 a session. Thanks, Susanna. You're the realist. Look at us now. <laughs> and now that I hope you're opening yourself to the idea of just going for it, you might be encountering this final rebuttal of, but what will people think? And what if I fail? I have so much compassion for this. You know I struggled with it too. But what if instead of negotiating with our emotions, which is hard, or wanting everybody to get it and approve, which is unrealistic. You instead just gave yourself five years to look like an idiot. And okay, do you have to have it be five years? No, 
I'll explain. And do you have to full on look like an idiot? Only maybe. But my point is that when I was studying people in my craft that I wanted to be like, I noticed it took them about three to five years to go from obscurity to TED Talks. And so I gave myself five years to make significant financial sacrifices and to look a little silly until I got my footing. And I'm really passionate about this because I've noticed that it's not that people aren't smart enough or good enough to go into what you really want. Humans are really adaptable. It's more so that we just have a proclivity to give up too early and call our results as, see, I tried and it didn't work for me on all a data set of actions. To paraphrase Jack Hiles, success and failure are not two different roads. They're the same road. Success is just a little farther down. And so for your particular goal, I hope you'll find two to three role models who came from a similar background as you, so you could study them even more closely how they made that pivot you want. Or maybe they were against even greater odds. And then ask them how long it took to get where you want to go, and then give yourself an even more generous time budget just to manage your expectations well to get to that spot. And since I'm not going to sugarcoat that this is hard, I'm here to share the highlight reel of humbling moments from my first few years in business. I got scammed out of all my 20K in savings pretty much right out of the gate after quitting my corporate job. Ew. And instead of accepting the kind of invitation from that company to go back to that corporate job, I cleaned houses and I worked at the front desk while I got my career coaching practice off the ground. And maybe worst of all, I published this extremely cheesy first edition of my website in 2018. <laughs> ah, okay, let's just move on. So, <laughs> um, understandably, I'm not even gonna blame people for this. They said things that murdered my ego on a regular basis, like, so do you make any money doing that? And I was like, no, but I will, okay? <laughs> so what kept me in it? I'm not made of steel. I could laugh now, but it was hard. There was plenty of tears. I felt really small a lot of the time. But it was the belief that if my persistence and iteration remained constant, the only difference between me and my role models is time. And I held on to that belief with a death grip. And so maybe for you, you need to give yourself six to 12 months to withstand as many no's as necessary, to land that job you've been hoping for. Or maybe you need to send out 200 pitches to get that first customer. Or maybe you just need to hit publish on 50 imperfect but heartfelt podcast episodes before you hit your groove. Whatever it is, I hope you'll be patient with yourself and realize it takes everybody time. So has it been worth it? Honestly, not just because it seems like it might be easy to say right now. And will it be worth it for you? To answer this, I want to tell you about Ava, who found me on Google after she had the sinking feeling that after seven years of study and work as a structural engineer, she realized it just wasn't for her. Similar to the many lawyers and CPAs and medical professionals I've helped, we had some tearful conversations about letting go of the career she worked so hard for. That was three years ago. It turns out after four career coaching conversations and 18 career paths explored from meteorology to firefighting, go Ava, <laughs> to one foot in the door part-time gig, we ended up finding the job that epitomizes who she is, which is a thoughtful listener that likes to compile information and present practical solutions in return. It turns out this is called UX research, a job she hadn't really considered before, but ends up being perfect. And she, again, through just networking and finding somebody who loved her attitude and wanted to bet on her, she landed an amazing job with a 20K salary boost, and even though it wasn't about the money and she was already doing great. And <laughs> I will say, like, She'll be the first to tell you it wasn't easy. Right, Ava? But it was worth it. 
because plot twist, one of, my, one of my favorite parts of the story is that we're now best friends and she's in the audience today. <laughs> and as for my own five-year career experiment to see if I could create a dream career a little earlier than I thought was common, I was willing to be proved wrong. Yeah, it was totally worth it. I've gotten to help over 200 professionals into jobs they genuinely feel called to. Some of those are families that have gotten to adopt kids, move to that city, maybe closer to home, buy a house, but best of all, just really serve people in a way that they genuinely believe in and they feel like is the best use of what they've been given to work with. And as for the money, because we all worry or wonder about it, and that's okay. Yeah, I did eventually figure it out. And I now make well over six figures and have a growing team. I didn't want to share that, but my friend said I was talking myself down a little bit too much in this talk. <laughs> and as I was thinking about what's ahead, one morning this past November, I was thinking about all the dreams that got me into this whole thing. And I was thinking about all those TED Talks I watched just shy of five years ago. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool if I gave one of those? Maybe I'll need another five years, but wouldn't it be cool? And the moment I had that thought, my phone buzzed beside me in the bathroom windowsill, and I picked it up to find this email titled, Invitation to Speak at TEDx Tamu. To the girl who was willing to make a crazy bet that it could all work out. Thank you. And to each of you, I want to leave you with reassurance. Your aspirations aren't crazy. Your analysis paralysis isn't forever. And the angst you might be feeling now is the small gate you will jump over to get to the mountaintop of reward on the other side. With patience and iteration, you can accomplish more than you think. After all, What's five years of sacrifice if you set yourself up for reward in the next 50? Thank you. <laughs>